It's an all-new era in Manchester. A BBL giant is now at the helm, and he's recruited some of the very best in the business to help him get the job done. Welcome to the National Basketball Performance Centre in Manchester for a fascinating Northwest derby as the Giants host the Cheshire Phoenix. Both teams looking to continue their promising starts of the season and establish their credentials in prime time. And alongside me, two men who are no strangers to prime time themselves. Mike Tuck, here in the chair. Good to see you both. In fact, Mr. Tuck, haven't you changed your name officially by Depot to Sky Sports, Mike Tuck? Well, I've officially stepped off the court, so I guess we've got to trademark the Sky Sports, baby. Oh, we've got it all about the business, all about the business. Now, our first time in Manchester this season, and it's fair to say there's a lot of excitement and anticipation about the place, isn't there? Yeah, huge excitement about this team. We've got a new coach. We've got nine new players on this team. All guys coming from different directions. Really excited to see them play tonight. We've been talking already in the brief start to the season, Kieran, that it's a, it's a London Leicester title showdown. But can Manchester force their way into the reckoning, do you think? Well, I definitely believe they can be in the mix. You know, Vince has recruited a, a BBL All-Star team. You know, players hand-selected, best players throughout the league with a lot of experience. So definitely going to be in the running. If I cast my memory back, Mike Tuck, you uh, called them as your season surprise didn't you which explains your credentials why they've had such a strong start to the season yeah i mean for some people it wouldn't be a surprise but other people you know a new a new situation a new coach all got new guys coming together but this team is exciting to watch they play at a high pace lots of exciting individual talent they're the team to watch they it's been a great start for them the giants three wins in a row have them equal on points with uh, the unbeaten lions Manchester having played one game more than London. The Giants' only loss has been to Bristol, who have won two out of two, with Cheshire just behind their loss, coming at home to Plymouth. All the other teams in the league, they are still looking for their first win. Now, the new Giants head coach, Vince McCauley, is a bona fide BBL legend. We paid him a visit a little bit earlier on, on this week to find out what brought him here to Manchester and what he's trying to build here with the Giants. Post uh, January and, and leaving London, I was kind of on a, on a world excursion, just enjoying myself. Then I heard that there was some need of new direction in Manchester. And some of the backroom stuff was, was collapsing. So, you know, I spoke with the people who were involved at the time and, and put together a consortium to try and take it over. And so I was able to take my place here about a month ago and start implementing some of my own type of things uh, that I'd like to do. Of the 2021 BBL Trophy Champions. Well, I'd like to build it up again, just like I did with the London Lions. Bring in some of the best minds in British basketball. Bring in some of the youngest talent. Bring in some of the best players like Dirk Williams and, and Ramon Fletcher. And build a powerhouse and, you know, with a view to trying to win the league in the next couple of seasons. And I think the guys, they want to buy into something. They want to believe in something. They want to be coached the right way. They want ownership to behave the right way. I have a reputation of getting things done. I think that's fair to say. You know, Dirk Williams, improved as a player. When they let him go, it was a no-brainer to, to get him onto my team. Oh, Doug Williams with the throw down! Ramon Fletcher is a guy that I've always wanted on my team. You know, he's beaten us in many a final, and every time I say, you're going to play a final for me one day, and hopefully that day is coming soon. It's Fletcher, it's the foul, it's Lasker. They're going to look it up, they're going to shine it up. You know, putting Ramon Fletcher at the head of the snake for my team is, is just beautiful. Fletcher, top of the key, knocks it down! I expect those two to be right up there for MVP contention. I think the biggest challenge in the first instance is the backroom organization. We have a few ideas on that, so hopefully we can get that right with the help of a few people. To say we're dark horses, is early doors, and that's only going to be based on the reputation of the people we have here. Six, ten games in, I think we'll start to see us motor, and that will be where we want to be. Successful season, well, obviously, I think, firstly, you know, full houses here in this 
fantastic venue. That would be a great statement because that would build a platform for going forward. I've always said, you know, my teams always have to make the playoffs. That's always the number one goal. Uh, and we'd like to win. We have four chances to win something this year. It's going to be tough. Uh, but I think this team has a unique feeling about it. And actually, looking around Manchester and seeing the facilities here, the love of the game here, I think we can do that. I'm all about British basketball, building the economy of basketball in Manchester, giving opportunities for British players to play. If I can help with some of that, get guys right to the top level, feel confident to be able to play at this level, that's what keeps me going. Kieran, you can't believe your eyes. More footage of Drew Lasker winning oh, things. Honestly, <laughs> you just cannot escape it. What are the most important things that Vince McCauley brings to the mix? Well, I think Vince... First, first of all, he, he brings a wealth of experience to building franchises. You know, he, he knows all the backroom, the community stuff, but his recruitment is, is, is paramount, as well as giving confidence to all the players to play at their best. Let's talk about that recruitment, because it's uh, absolutely raised eyebrows across the league, Mike. It's not just experienced BBL talent that he's brought in, but elite-level BBL talent. 100%. Kieran talked on it earlier. It's like a BBL all-star team out there, and you've got guys that have had experiences all around the BBL, like Sheffield, like Newcastle, like London. Um, and then, you know, at the head of that snake, we have Ramon Fletcher, the two-time MVP. So he's put together a fierce squad here of competitors. It is going to make the London Manchester Games must-watch this season, I can tell you. One notable absentee, though, Kieran, is Dan Clark, Team GB skipper, with the Giants recently, announced his retirement this week. Yeah, and that was actually a shock to me. I, I literally spoke to Dan a couple of weeks ago, asked him how he was getting on, what he was doing. And all of a sudden, he's announced his retirement. And now, today, I've seen that he's now going to be general manager at Surrey Scorchers. So it's great to see that with the wealth experience in basketball, he's now going to be able to give back and, and take Surrey Scorchers in a different direction. It's great to see him still in the league, absolutely. Uh, there are plenty of other top players for Vince to work with, though. Let's start with Ramon Fletcher, two-time BBL MVP, Eagles legend. So it's going to be odd uh, fans seeing him play for a different team. At this stage of his career, Mike, how motivating... Will he find this fresh start, this new challenge? Yeah, I, had, I was able to have a quick word with him before the game, and, and he said, you know, as much as he enjoyed his time in Newcastle, he feels like a big weight has been lifted off his shoulders. And for him, it's it's an opportunity for him to come down here and shine on a different level. You know, Vince is one of those coaches that will kind of give players their free reign and, and let them play and do and play to their strengths. So for him, it's an exciting time. Dirk Williams, one of the sharpest shooters in the game, worked with Vince at the Lions, of course. Mixed start, uh, though, to his life as a giant, Kieran. Yeah, you know, his first game wasn't shooting the ball particularly well, but you can see his movement's still there, he's still hungry. He's going to be a player who's going to be a big, big impact this year in the BBL. On to Cheshire, some really effective defensive players on this roster. Is that how Coach Ben Thomas has built this team, Kieran, starting with the D? You can see that from a pers personnel perspective with Jamel Anderson, Larry Austin Jr., players who can really pick up full court and disrupt the teams. Let's talk Jamel Anderson first, then. What a 12 months it's been for him on the BBL Defensive Team of the Year, winning gold for England in the 3x3 at the Commonwealth Games. You've had a few tussles with him over the years, Mike. 100%. You know, Jamel is one of the most recognizable faces in this league. He's a proven guy, kind of no more known on the defensive end as being a role player. But this season, we've really seen him step up in the three games that he's played. Tajay Teague, six foot eight, big game against Newcastle, finished with 21 points, eight rebounds, four assists. So we can expect, we're hoping, more of the same from him tonight, Mike. Yeah, he is, he is a solid force inside. Uh, good player, has the, has the ability to step out to the three. He's just one of those guys, not too flashy, but very efficient. Larry Austin had a huge season last year. Another player added uh, to the BBL Defensive Team of the Year. What makes him such an effective defensive player? Here? He just likes to get in people's faces. You know, his hands are always active. You know, he's moving. He wants to play defense, too. That's usually where they start of it, wanting to play defense. So it's great to see him back uh, for Cheshire for a full season. Slower start to this season. He's battling an ankle injury. Hope he's back to his best for our live game tonight. Now, we've already heard from the Giants head coach, Vince McCauley, what about the Phoenix coach, Ben Thomas? Well, he caught up a little bit earlier on with Mike. Coach Thomas, your team is 2-1 and one so far on the season. Are you happy with the way the team's playing? I wish it was 3-0. Um, you know, we lost a game that we probably should have won to Plymouth at home. Um, but, you know, a tough win on the road to Surrey to open the season and then a great win, you know, last week in front of, you know, a packed house that, you know, our fans have been great. So, um, yeah, it's been OK. It's, you know, it could be better, but, yeah, it's good. Moving forward to this week, what are the areas you've been focusing on in practice? 
Giants have been playing really well. Um, you know, recruited some really good players. So for, for us, it's been a case of how we're going to stop them, how we're going to manage their guys. Um, you know, we've been working on our transition defense, but we've been also working on our, um, you know, shot selection and ball security. That's going to be a huge key to, the, to, to, to today's game. And the Phoenix are trophy winners from last season. What are the aspirations for this year? Uh, to be consistent, um, to consistently perform at a high level, week in, week out. Um, you know, we always want to target silverware. You know, the trophy is going to be something that we want to keep hold of. Um, but yeah, look, it's just about being consistent and the results will take care of themselves. Big gar Derby game tonight. You're up against a revitalized Giants outfit. What are your thoughts on this game? I'm looking forward to it. You know, these Derby games are always, a, you know, a big event. It's not just basketball. You know, the fans get into it and it always carries a little bit more weight. Um, but yeah, look, we're excited to compete against this team. I think, you know, it's you always want to play against good players. You always want to coach against good coaches. So, you know, really looking forward to it. Well, good luck tonight. Thank you for your time. Cheers, Mike. So as we've established a lot of flair in this giant side, Cheshire, one of the strongest defences in the business. And the numbers, even though it's very early days for stats so far this season, back this up. Manchester, well, they're leading the league in points scored pushing close to 90 a game, and they're up against a top three defense in Cheshire. So Mike, what do Cheshire need to do to contain them where other teams have failed so far this season? Yeah, I mean, the Manchester Giants are an extremely athletic team, extremely quick team, a team that can put up a lot of points very quickly. I think the Cheshire Phoenix need to do a really good job in transition defense. Uh, I think they need to watch their foul trouble with, with Ochorobia and then just protect the paint overall. Yeah, I, like what Mike's saying, Fletcher loves to push the ball. He gets the ball and throws it long. Cheshire have to be switched on, take away that fast break, and it, it slows down Manchester, and that's exactly what Cheshire needs. On the other side, bench scoring has been uh, a key attribute for the Cheshire Phoenix this season. How's a match to keep that in check? It's, it's essentially containing the players with the personnel, you know, you, Strawberry coming off the bench who wants to put up threes. You know, you have to stop that three-point shot. Will Neighbour wants to get going. Danny Evans as well, adding to the mix. So it's, it's, it's walking in on those individual assignments. Mike, very quickly, give us one player that we haven't highlighted yet that we should be keeping an eye out for tonight. Well, you've got to keep an eye on my guy, Nick Lewis, you know, my fellow Tor Toronto native. It's great to see him back in the BBL, back playing. And he's a guy that can get really hot from three and, and create for other guys. So happy to see him back. All right, brilliant stuff. We are almost ready for tip-off here in Manchester. The Northwest Derby, two teams that will absolutely consider themselves as contenders, certainly in the playoff mix, and maybe more. This one's getting underway next. Tonight, the Knicks are in town for a Northwest Dog. It's game time.
Manchester and Cheshire making their first appearances on Sky Sports this season, both with plenty of ambition and wanting to step up under the bright lights. We're almost ready for tip, so let's get over for the first time tonight to check in with Atro and Dan Ravage. Thank you very much, Nat. Yes, and two teams we've seen this season, both capable of building a big lead, both capable of giving away a big lead as well. They're all, sorry, I'm uh, leaving Fletch hanging there. They're two teams that are still searching for the consistency, but on their day, both can put up a big number. That's exactly it, Dan. I think both teams have showed us the potential and the firepower they have on offense, but they have showed us the frailties on the defensive end as well. So it'll be interesting to see who molds first tonight. Yes, indeed. Let's take a look at the starting fives for tonight's game, starting with the Manchester Giants. I've been super impressed with the energy of Green, a rookie to the league. He's got some great experience vets around him to learn from. He has. He's been that centerpiece for them. But yes, you say the experience comes through, Dan. Two-time MVP Ramon Fletcher will be leading the way in terms of MVP power along with Derek Williams. And if we take a look at the uh, Cheshire Phoenix, uh, one guy who's really caught the eye, a former teammate of yours, Jamel Anderson, averaging nearly 19 points a game in the early stages. He's just playing with that free-flowing basketball game, incredibly offensively, but also... Mike Archrobia for me is that huge centerpiece in the middle holding everything together. Well, the two teams have made their way out onto court. It still looks a little odd seeing number 44 on a green shirt. <laughs> and we are almost ready to get things going here in the Northwest Derby. Team Green to jump it up, and it is. Manchester who get the opening possession. Fletcher guarded by Anderson. We've seen that match up in the old Leicester and Newcastle days. Here's Lee. Lee along the baseline slapped away. Illegally so. Teague gets called for the first foul of the game. I really like that start from William Lee. Faces up and attacks Teague straight at the rim and gets him to commit an early foul. William Lee in his second spell in the BBL played for Leicester a few years ago tremendous athlete one of the great shot blockers I think a few of the teams have forgotten how athletic he is because they were shooting well within his range he can block you from pretty much anyway that long and athletic what a great start to the season he's having 20 points and 12 and a half rebounds a game absolute monster on both ends of the floor 3.8 blocks per game which is an incredible number you assume it will go down as they play more games but it's been a great start here's T trying to back down the double team knocks the ball loose Giants come away with it great help there from the Giants inside came over quickly Fletcher for three, knocks it down. Didn't need a lot of time or space to get that one off. He found a little pocket and put it up. Well, the one thing we've seen from Manchester in the early stages of this season is in transition, when they push, you have to pick them up. Anderson driving in for two. That's a really confident, aggressive look. He's going be a player who's real patient on offense, and you can see him attacking the defense straight away. Austin pushing it back to Anderson and he gets up back to Austin somehow and he scores You've got to feel that Cheshire Phoenix are excellent in the open floor You see him push the ball there and as a result an easy two It might be a game about who has the best transition defense Lee with the mid-range Defense you say Dan? I'm so on the floor yeah, offense maybe. here Yeah, 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 maybe <laughs> Fletcher to Lee and he taps it in for two Ramon Fletcher just putting on a plate and William Lee's length and athleticism, that's an easy two for him. Machirovia. Anderson. Shot clock getting low here for Austin. Anderson, deep three, too long. Fletcher for three, rims out. Oh, Ramon Fletcher looking to 
Get some shots up early. Set the tone for his team. Foul called on number 24, Robinson. Again, Jamal Anderson, attack mode. As soon as he catches the ball, he's looking to create and make something happen. Right at the defender there. Jerobia at the elbow, not standing. 15 foot jumper. Really good looking shot for him. If Mike Jerobia is knocking that 15 footer down, it becomes even more difficult to stop. Here's Lee. Fletcher. Cross court to Green. Let's fly from long range, and he knocks down the triple. Everyone this giant team's got the green light. Green there, joining the party, and knocked on that three. Well, that pass, not a great one in transition for the Knicks. Daniels unable to keep it in court. But uh, as you say, everybody has the green light. And uh, Mr. Green knocking down that one. Here's Fletcher to Williams. Five on the shot clock for Dirk Williams. That's a little short. It falls down in the hands of uh, Ocherobia. Here's Austin tipped in by Ocherobia. Well, I like that intent from Larry Austin to attack him. Mike Ocherobia will be cleaning those boards all evening. Well, we've been joined in commentary by Mike Tuck. Mike, as frenetic an opening uh, three or four minutes as we expected coming to watch these two teams. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I kind of like it. High-paced, fast basketball, lots of baskets, lots of shots. Uh, this is what we came here to watch. You like it now you've retired, running up and down with these young boys, maybe not. No, I could keep up with these guys yeah. right now. Yeah, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, incredible to watch. Both teams, a lot of weapons on either side. T driving hard, no way through Lee. And Lee just went down with it. He'd done the hard part, but shot blockers chase the ball, don't they? And the movement down is what the referee saw and called. And he didn't need to come down to his length and athleticism. It would have made that shot very difficult for Teague. But as you say, Dan, easy call for the referee in the end. But good to see that matchup, though. Both of those guys going at each other. Both picked up early fouls. The energy from this Cheshire Phoenix team is, is a lot different from last game. I feel like they've come out a lot more aggressive. I think Coach Ben Thomas has probably put them through the paces this week. So the, the energy they've come in is just what they need. Well, Danny Evans checking into the game for the first time, replacing Teague. So it makes them a, a little bit smaller, this next team, but they might need the pace. Lobbed inside. Williams unable to convert at the rim. Anderson way off the mark. Lee with the rebound. He knew it as soon as it left his hand. You saw Jamal Anderson try and chase down the offensive board there. Stolen away by Austin. Austin going route one as he always does. Lee with the rebound. Quick kick out. Robertson's out in front and he will jam it in. Wow, the pace of this game, back and forth, back and forth. And Robertson oh. benefits from the dunk finish and the open floor. And Fletcher got the ball forward, got clobbered by his own teammate from behind, as you saw on that replay. And he's slow back to his feet as the fans were watching the dunk there from Robertson. Well, the MC in the house is saying, OK. I'm not sure he's the one clutching the back of his head, though. He'll be fine. Just, just walk it off. Just walk it off. No, obviously he took a, took a big hit there. He'll, he'll go and take a minute here. Uh, and my former teammate, Cal Jones, enters the game. Good to see Cal back in a Giants uniform. Dirk Williams just runs right into him from behind. Sorry, was it Williams? I think it was. Look at quarterback getting sucked after the pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, roughing the pass up. Cherovia kicks it back out. Daniels 
mid-range from Anderson late and the shot clock drops for two. Jim well, Anderson can't run sky high and even the soft touch gets it to go. And that's a great shot. That's his bread and butter. Little one one dribble pull up 15 footer. He's not missing many of those. Green given the three. That's a dangerous thing to do sagging off him. Oh my word. Green. He has already hit two threes in this game, letting it fly. He's got the green light right now, and it's going in. He's always an energy player as well, and he just thrives off that positivity. Six early points for him. Well, with each play like that, it just pumps his energy up, which pumps the crowd up, because you see the response from him. He is one of those guys who tends to dance back down the court or sticks his tongue out. You can, you can see he's enjoying himself out there. That's what we need in the BBL. We need more of these characters. We need more of these personalities coming out. But Jerobia has three guys trying to block his shot, but still converts. Double team, triple team, it does not matter. My God, Jerobia, beautiful patience there, and she's over well in the defense. Here's Green again. He's going to let it fly again. Oh, string, what a start from Taj Green. Nine early points. Three threes, Taj Green. Mr. Green, he is automatic. Evans trying to respond. Missed everything. I don't know if Williams got a little hand on that. It certainly fell a long way short. Robertson inside to Lee. And the Giants in full flow right now. 20 points with still three and a half to go. That's going to be a technical, is it? They got a delay of game warning a few moments ago. It was uh, after one of the breaks, and straight away, they've done it again, and it's a technical. It goes against Dirk Williams, so that's his second. Well, I mean, that's not what you want to do right now. The momentum all in the Giants' favor. You want to keep riding that wave until it naturally stops, but something like this... Can give, leave, leave a little bit of daylight for the Phoenix here to go and run for, the, uh, for themselves. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, stops the game, slows it down. This could definitely work in Cheshire Phoenix. Cheshire Phoenix favor. Well, Corey Johnson, who's uh, been a little ill race recently and uh, not played, is back for the Giants, and he's going to come in for William Lee. All those three-point shots going down. Corey Johnson's not too bad yeah. for shooting threes himself. That's what he's hired to do. So it's going to stretch the defense of the Phoenix even more, knowing that they've got to honor and guard Corey Johnson. Here's Anderson for three. Misses everything straight out of bounds and will be a Manchester ball. Hey, to say that he's missed a couple of them, he's not afraid to, to, to shoot them. And you know what? I like that mentality. You know, miss one, shoot the next. Keep going. Don't worry about the misses. Keep getting good looks and shoot the right shots. Jordan Strawberry into the game for the first time for Cheshire. Dirk Williams playing point guard. Is Cal Jones more accustomed to the role? Gets into the key. 15 foot jumper. He's made his Manchester Giants career out of that. He's the leading scorer all time in the franchise history. There will be a lot of these ones in Hat Talent. 100%. I've seen that so many times. That exact. Off the dribble, find a little pocket, pull up, jump shot. Alan Jones has been doing that for oh, over a decade. Yeah, he's kind of like a dinosaur, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike, Mike Tuck dinosaur, extinct on the on the hardwood now. That's a harsh word. <laughs> but the incredible thing about it, you think his brother uh, James and his sister Georgina and even his dad, who played before the three-point line, could shoot the three. He never shoots the three. He's made six three-pointers in his entire BBL career. Wow. And it's just, in the modern game, it's just... It's jarring how few threes he takes, but he's very effective in the mid-range, that's for sure. Kicked out to the corner to Evans. I think he checked his feet there. 
Johnson will let it fly. Here's Johnson in transition to finish. It's so lethal at pushing the basketball. Everyone's running at full speed, and that's a really nice soft finish there from Corey Johnson. And lethal is right. Very selfless team. Loves to push the ball. Exciting basketball here. Evans into traffic off the glass. Too nice a breath to take from Evans, and he's a player that they'll want to settle in which, since returning back to the UK. And this is what Manchester do so well. Blink of an eye off the score, they're already back and have those two points back. Yeah, and this is something we saw in the Plymouth game for Cheshire. They're just not doing a great job in transition defense. They need to get guys back to the paint to protect and need a little bit of pressure on the ball handle as well. Strawberry late in the shot clock. Driving through, kicks out to Anderson. And that ends up in the hands of Cal Jones. Here's Fletcher. Fletcher going left. And you know there's only one outcome from that. Excellent, aggressive, intense attack to the rim by Ramon Fletcher. And it's a simple stop there. They collect the rebound. Outlet and Fletcher with that. Also guaranteed bucket left hand. Guaranteed going to the left hand. You know that's on the scouting report. We gotta get him going downhill right. Coach Ben Thomas is not going to be happy right here. Well, he's called a timeout, Ben Thomas here. Trailing by 12. The concern for him will be the fact that they've given up uh, 28 points. Well, earlier in the game, we managed, in the day, sorry, we managed to catch up with Jamel Anderson. Jamel Anderson coming off an incredibly successful summer at the Commonwealth games taking home a gold medal how are you bringing that momentum into this season yeah just it was an amazing experience and one that i'll never forget but i'm ready for this season and i'm bringing that that excitement into this year and you're one of the more familiar faces in this league one of the more ex experienced guys in the bbl are you excited about this new challenge with the cheshire phoenix yeah definitely the fans have been amazing so far i know we got a packed house this sunday so i'm definitely enjoying my experience so far with cheshire phoenix and obviously you're a former giant yourself uh, returning to Manchester tonight, what are your thoughts on tonight's game? Yeah, it's going to be a, a fun-filled game, like really exciting, um, both ends of the floor, so I hope everybody enjoys it. You know, thanks for your time, good luck tonight. Thank you. Well, and we were looking at his numbers earlier uh, today. This is obviously his second spell with Cheshire. He's averaging nearly 19 points a game this season, small sample size, but in the two spells, he's averaged close to 12 points a game, for everybody else, it's been more like six and a half. He seems to thrive in the Knicks jersey. He certainly does, Dan. You can just see as well the confidence and the aggressive mentality he's got on the offensive end of the floor. Well, Neighbor turns it over. Green out in transition, and it is slapped away. You can see Green thinking, well, what sort of poster am I going to put him on here? But uh, Larry Austin had other ideas and knocked it loose. And it's little plays that are to keep a team in it. Larry Austin Jr., significant disadvantage here, but he stays with the play and he's able to swipe the ball away, which is a basket-saving play. And uh, it actually gets the ball back because Fletch has thrown one off the mark there. He was aiming for Lewis in the corner. It ended up straight out of bounds. And uh, Cheshire got the ball back. Anderson. Sure. Here's Green again, and his pass is out of bounds. Well, he found a shooter, to be fair to him, he threw it straight to Kofi Josephs in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> he can shoot it too. <laughs> and that's an occupational hazard, though, and the way they're playing, they're playing so fast, you're going to pick up these turnovers here and there just because of the pace of the of, uh, of the way you're pushing the basketball, but well, at the moment it's working for them. They've got 28 points on the board so far. Yeah, that's it. You know, you're pushing the ball that, that fast. There's going to be a few mistakes that happen, but you're getting more opportunities at, uh, within within each quarter, so more shots, more more uh, offensive possessions, more times to score. His neighbor. Strawberry under pressure from Fletcher. Anderson gets it to Austin. Bullies his way up for two. 
Love that play from Larry Austin. Scary Larry. We're heading into spooky season here. Extremely physical guard, able to move guys out of the way under the basket. Nicholas Lewis going to the rim, takes the contact. He will shoot two. I think Nicholas Lewis is an excellent addition as well. Played against him over the years. Mike, of course, you played with him, and he's a guy that doesn't shy away from big plays, likes to make the big shot, and I know he's played the villain against us many a time over the years. Yeah, no, he does not shy away from, from anybody. Right? One of those guys that plays well at home, on the road, can get extremely hot very quick and can has, has the ability to shoot from downtown. The, guy, the kid has range. Hit some big shots in the fourth quarter of the win against Newcastle. But he is one of those guys that he can't come in and give you instant offense. And suddenly 10 can be on the board in the blink of an eye. Nate Robinson knocks the ball loose. Son of Mark, of course, the man who made his name playing for the Giants back in the 90s. Also played for the Sharks. Really great scorer of the basketball. His neighbor open for three, and he knocks it down. Big shot, much needed. I thought Will oh, stolen by Austin. Gets it away on the buzzer. Oh! In and out. That would have been a real momentum shot for Larry Austin at the end of the first quarter. But the neighbor three has cut the gap down to eight here at the end of the first period in the Northwest Derby. It's the Manchester Giants 21, the Cheshire Manchester Giants 29, Cheshire Phoenix 21. We'll be back with the second quarter after this. Welcome back to Manchester, where the Giants lead the Phoenix by eight at the end of the first quarter in the Northwest Derby. Vince McCauley will be pleased the way his team have got out and run against this Knicks team to put 29 points on the board. And it will be Knicks who get it started here in the second quarter. Austin looking to attack. Tried to kick it to neighbor, threw it straight out of bounds. 
Bad offense from the Phoenix there. Ball stayed in the hands of one guy, Larry Austin Jr. No movement, no cutting. Defense just had to stand strong and as you saw, early Phoenix turnover start the second quarter. Williams. They're even even when Cheshire are back, they're still quick, Manchester. It's a bad sign for the Phoenix defense too. Of all the chaos in the first quarter, Dirk Williams has zero points. That'll be his first two points of the season. Daniels. Oh, Fletcher with a foul with two seconds on the shot clock. Want that one back. Oh no, Will Neighbour looked like he was in a nice little fadeaway jump shot there. He's pretty accurate from those distances. Strawberry for three. Rebound late. That three ball just not dropping for the Cheshire Phoenix here early. One of nine from behind the arc as Dirk Williams goes to the rim. Again, this is a guy you do not want to heat off. Dirk Williams, one of the best scorers in the league. He's been pretty patient. Then the game comes in today, but that will be a first foul on Jamel Anderson. Here we go. The back iron for Dirk Williams. Second one is good. for three knocks it down the big shot from Daniels again the offense wasn't exactly free flowing but they were able to get Daniels open and he was able to deliver oh, Austin chasing a steal couldn't quite get that lob towards Lee but broken up here's Austin Daniels in the corner tipped down by Fletcher Johnson Again, there's been a few passes slightly off radar from the Giants. Yeah, they're certainly looking for their teammates, which is the right thing to do, but the execution on that one is turnover number eight now for the Manchester Giants. It's just Kofi, Kofi Joseph. He just, yeah, yeah, it's they like need gravity. to move Kofi It's away. like gravity over there. Neva has a huge size advantage for Camp. Makes full effect of it. Here's Williams. To Lee with the flush. Wow. William Lee just ran the floor like any big man should. Nice little pop pass. But he does the rest, but don't finish. Strawberry. Now to Neva on the pick and pop. He can go. Fletcher with the crossover all the way to the basket. Wow, it's clapped in. They come split the defense in half. Got a wide open layup. And uh, Austin just lost control of the ball. Bounced it off. Uh, Williams, as we look back at the Fletcher score. And that, that's something I talked about in the pregame there is Cheshire Phoenix have to protect the paint. There's two plays in, the, in, in a row where we do, do not have a big man. We do not have help side in the paint helping over. So it's good to see uh, Ocherobia come back into the game. Hopefully he can help him there. Fletcher. Looking at the referee wanting a foul. He's not getting it. Fletcher, top of the key, does get the foul. No, it's a traveling violation, the call. Wow, there was a lot of protest there for both Fletcher and 
Vince McCauley. Fletcher just been deemed to take a few extra steps there. Oh, I see. It's because he faked the pass through. Austin going quick, getting all the way to the basket. Vintage Larry Austin. Giants this time not setting up, not turning their heads. An easy basket for Cheshire. And it's plays like that that are get the Phoenix back in the game in a hurry. And we've seen the Giants blow leads already this year. But up by 20 in a couple of games and lost the leads. So this is something, again, mentally they have to stay locked in, stay focused. Well, they had a massive lead here against... Uh, Mike's Sharks team a couple of weeks ago and but for Kipper Nichols toes Sheffield would have won that game in regulation as it happened Manchester managed to pull it out in double overtime well it's not a great inbound is uh, Austin into traffic and a foul is called it's a late whistle but he will shoot too. It was a strange one. It was like Robertson was leading in out of bounds, which he had to pass the ball, which created a turnover. Larry Austin Jr. does a really good job of getting the referees to blow the whistle there and attacking the rim. Well, he is one of the most direct players in the BBL. Yeah, if there's one thing he does well, it's, it's going downhill towards the basket. Uh, it's definitely his, his strength. Well, Austin is uh, directing the defense for going back to take the second foul shot. And he's a guy that could propel this Phoenix team. We saw him do it up in Glasgow at the Emirates Arena in the BBL Trophy Final. He was the catalyst. He was the leader. And we're not going to need much of the same from him this season. We're obviously, that's a flop. And is it, I couldn't see past Vince. Was it a technical? No, it was a blocking foul on Larry Austin. Well, I've seen those go either way. and the bad news for the Chester Phoenix is that will be Larry Austin's second foul. Which you have to put the decision now in the hands of Ben Thomas, the coach of the Phoenix, to, as to whether he substitutes Larry Austin Jr. Because they cannot afford him to pick up his third this side of the half. Well, I think the answer has just been made by Ben Thomas because Anderson is wandering slowly onto court. But uh, Austin's still getting an explanation on the call. And that's an area of, of weakness for the Phoenix this year is the lack of point guards. Jordan Strawberry is going to have to manage that nose now, along with Lloyd Daniels. But the natural forehand is are in short supply. Of course, last year they had Teddy Okarafo, GB International, controlling that point guard spot. And you said it right there, they need an experienced point guard that can help settle them down, play two paces. Uh, teams can always get out of sync when you have a scoring point guard like Larry Austin Jr. The second one wipes his feet for Robertson, but does drop. Foul caught off the ball. I think it's on uh, legend Roberton inside. He's Hit. another player that could be really impactful for this team. Seven foot one. Absolute presence inside. We saw glimpses of his potential last year. Plagued with injuries and, of course, foul trouble. Always seems to interrupt his productivity on court. That's his second. His strawberry. Anderson knocks down the shot. Great shot for Jamel Anderson there. Re recognized the defender going under the screen. Quick little pull up, knocks down an 18 footer. And that's what Mike Cotterobia makes them better as well. Good screen there. Clears the defense, and Jamel Anderson looks so confident in that jump shot. 
Robertson driving in, and uh, Robia hadn't quite got there to be in a defensive position, so he gets called for his second personal foul. Good. Attack of the rim from Robertson. Oh, my mistake, it's his first, just clear that up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Good news. Phoenix there, because again, Mike Cotterobia is the, the difference maker, or can be the difference maker in games such as these. And Robertson starting to heat up a little bit now. Six, six points personal for him. Two for two from the field. Two for four, though, from the free throw line. Strawberry with the head face. He's under pressure. Robinson with the rebound. Lee steps into the three. Reverting, keeping it alive. Robertson going after it too. Anderson all the way to the basket with a little help from Michael Chirobia. Michael Chirobia running the floor. Well, established his position. Jamal Anderson straight to the rim there. Cut it back to six. Fletcher, short. Knocked loose and comes up in the hands of William Lee. Lee, Derek Williams in the corner, resets for the three and hit. Beautiful extra pass there from William Lee. Saw it open, Derek Williams in the corner. Derek Williams, as cool as it comes. Little shutter step, step back and knocks it down. Finds a gap where they didn't look to be any. That is so tough. 11 points personal now for Jamal Anderson. Fletcher drops it off. And out of bounds with the Giants. Right idea here from Fletcher, trying to drop it off to his big man, but Ochoa will be able to get a hand off. Could have went either way as well. The Giants fortunate to have another bite of the cherry here. Lobbed straight into Lee, who's got the position, but the ball away had his radar off. Strawberry. Inside to Archerobia with a little baby hook. Really good inside position again. Mike Archerobia has been such a difference maker since being reintroduced into this game. Makes the team better and closes the gap to five. Well, the Manchester Giants led by as many as uh, 12, but that deficit has been half now. And Vince McCauley calls a timeout. Ramon Fletcher sitting down to listen to that. And earlier he chatted to Mike to tell us his thoughts about his time in Manchester. Here with Ramon Fletcher, seven seasons in Newcastle, two league MVP awards, now a new challenge with the Giants. What brought you here to Manchester? Um, it was, like you said, it was time for a new challenge. Um, no disrespect to anything that happened up in Newcastle, but, you know, sometimes you get tired of the same thing, you know, and I think this was a big challenge, especially with Vince, with Will, with Dirk, and I think it was time to move forward. And Vince has roped in a wealth of talent this season. How exciting is it to play with this group of guys? It's very exciting. Um, a lot of basketball IQ, a lot of players that just want to win. It's no egos, nobody looking for individual accolades. It's just, we just want to get Ws. And what's your prediction for this season? How successful can this team be? We want to be successful as, you know, as our roster says. You know, I can't make any promises, as you know, the BBL is unpredictable. So we're going to see what happens. The big thing that we're going to do is progress every single day. Ramon, thanks for your time. Good luck tonight. Thank you. An interesting turn of phrase will be as successful as our roster says. The roster says they're pretty good. 
uh, some, some all stars in the throw in the mix there. And I think what's interesting about this team is as well, you've got the, the veterans in Callum Jones, you've got the rookies in green, and you know, it's a nice little blend. It's like Vince McCauley's done this before, Dan. Well, he's been. Not his first time at the rodeo, that's fair to say. Here's Lee. That's a tough shot from William Lee. William Lee is a tough player. Already an early candidate to be a BBO All-Star himself. Strawberry under pressure, gets it away to El Chirovia. T looking for options, finds Anderson. Williams misses the three. Anderson keeps it in play. Extra pass on to Strawberry with the mid-range all screen. Strawberry looks really comfortable in that pull-up jump shot. They're going to need a little bit more production from him offensively. That'll be his first two points of the season. But they're weathering the storm without Austin at the moment. Here's William Lee from behind the arc. Manchester Giants are ruthless from that three-point line. William Lee gets another triple to go. Daniels now from behind the arc. Good boxing out. Green with the rebound. Fletcher on the spin. And takes the foul from Teague. Teague struggled to settle into this game. He's a guy that they looked for offensively. Had a really good game against Newcastle on their win up in Phoenix. He hasn't really been able to settle into this game offensively. One point for him so far this evening. Makes them both nine points and five or six assists, excuse me, for Mon Fletcher. Only six. <laughs> Anderson. Ooh. I'm not sure about that one from the angle we were at. Dirk Williams didn't think it was a foul. What did you think? It looked really awkward. I didn't think it was a foul, but Jamal Anderson will be happy he heard that whistle go. As he gets up in the air. It's one, of, it's one of those, he swipes down and depending on which angle you look at it, but wasn't a lot in it, but if he got him, Jamal Anderson's going to have an opportunity now to... to well, because he kicked it at the end, because he was coming back down, he wasn't sure a foul was going to be called, he passed it, so they're going to say... That was a, uh, a pass and therefore not a shooting oh, foul. Oh, wow. Last minute change of decision from Jamel Anderson's cost him a trip to the line. Archerovia around the screen. Uh, sorry, Archerovia with the screen. Strawberry goes around it. Robertson fighting his way to the hole. Good play from him. Anthony Robertson's done a really good job of throwing as the time has went on in this game. That's eight points personal for him and a really nice move towards the basket. Strawberry driving it, blocked by Lee. It was only a matter of time. William Lee averaging three and a half blocks a game. Throws one out of bounds there. They're not an easy team to get to the rim against. Manchester with the length of Lee and the athleticism of Green and then the size of Roberto when he's in the game. But the average eight blocks a game, Dan, just to put that into context, the second is Bristol and they average five, so that is a block party. It is a block five. party. Going after blocks again, didn't get one but did get a stop. Green has it batted loose, Anderson comes up with it. Another turn of the Giants, number 11 now. Teague is going to take the three. And that will be a Cheshire ball. 
Didn't look like a good receiver from, from T. You can see the angle was off. And a timeout called here from Ben Thomas. Wants to talk it over and get something good up the rim. Well, 14 seconds he will have on the shot clock to draw up a, a play in. There will be... Uh, 10.3 after the shot clock so Manchester should get one coming back the other way but Cheshire just trying to get this back down well hopefully into single figures but no worse than 10 going into the locker rooms well, it just looks when you compare the two offenses it's complete contrast everything for the Phoenix looks so much more labored Giants of course look more free flow and they're looking to attack but Giants three point assault has been Something that's quite remarkable. Six for nine, sixty-six percent from them for the three-point line, which when you say it, it, it can continue, but they look pretty pretty confident at the moment. Well, they certainly do. Two teams making their way back out onto the floor. Let's see what Coach Thomas has drawn up. Well, they're gonna need to compete with the opposition on the three-point line two for 14 at the moment which is a very modest 14 percent for ben thomas's cheshire phoenix strawberry gets it in daniels wide open for three well, johnson was looking down court but with the shot clock switched off he wisely slows down Fletcher had to just hustle over the halfway line there. Good recognition with the shot clock off. He's got this mismatch, he wants it. He attacks inside, drops it off to Green. Green doesn't get it away in time, and that will do it for the first half here in the North West Derby, where the Manchester Giants have a half century on the board and a 12-point lead. And I was talking to Ben Thomas and Danny Byrne before the game. We talked about Manchester in transition and how you've got to get back and, and stop them. Cheshire haven't really been able to do that in the first half. They haven't, no. The Manchester have just been relentless on uh, pushing the basketball. But not only are they pushing the basketball, they're getting good shots. Yes, the errors have come came with that, and you know they've been a bit careless with the basketball in the turnovers. But what they have been is they have been selfless. They've been looking for their teammates and getting good-looking shots. Well, 11 turnovers, as you say, is the one thing that Vince McCauley had wanted to clean up. But six of nine from, from behind the arc and 11 of 17 from inside it. Great shooting numbers from the Giants for their 50 points. Yeah, and it, it, everyone's getting involved as well. It started with Green hitting three triples early. William Lee leading the way with 13. And then Derek Williams joins the party. So it's been a really well-balanced offensive distribution for the Giants. And the two of 15, really the big stat that leaps off the page for Cheshire from behind the arc. They've got to find some way of getting that three ball to uh, drop. Well, let's uh, take a look at the second page here. You can see they're winning the rebounding battle in part because there are more points, uh, more rebounds to get because of the, the misses. And they've turned those turnovers into 10 points as well. Not a lot off the bench at either end of the floor just as yet. However, well, let's get some halftime thoughts. Dirk Williams is with Mike. Um, I mean, it feels great, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, uh, I wouldn't say we are such a stacked roster. I just think we just got a good team. I think Vince put a, a lot of good guys together. You know, no egos. So I think we just got a good group, and we're just going to keep chipping away every game. And Coach Vince McCauley is known for, you know, free-flowing offense, giving guys the green light. You guys are playing, you know, high-speed transition basketball. Uh, do you guys feel like you've been unleashed? Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think, you know, we're getting up and down and running fast. I think that's just our identity. I think we established it early. So, um, yeah, you know, Vince, uh, Vince um, he established it for us, and uh, I think that's just our identity right now. 
And, uh, you know, Cheshire in this first half have been a solid side, a little bit of fight back in, in that second quarter. What do the Giants need to do in the second half to win this game? Uh, obviously, you know, we've been struggling with the third quarter, so I think uh, when we get in there, we just need to talk to each other and uh, come out with some fire in the third quarter because I know Cheshire, that's a really good team, and they're going to come out, you know, with a lot of energy. So I think we just need to match their intensity. Dirk, good luck in the second half. Thank you. That's an interesting point. A 12-point deficit might seem significant. But as Dark Williams said, Cheshire have some real firepower and are not out of this. Reaction and analysis coming next. What a whirlwind start it was for the Manchester Giants. They racked up 29 points in the first quarter alone. Remember, this is the Cheshire Phoenix side that is shaped by its defense, a top three defense in the BBL. They had no answer for the Giants for much of the first half. They did get some offense going into the second quarter, but at the moment, at the half, it is a 12-point ball game, 50 to 38. And one of the big problems for Cheshire is shooting from downtown. Look at that, just 13 percent from the three-point range also bench points a key attribute for this Cheshire side Kieran Achara coming in but they're not leveraging that at the moment yeah we said earlier that they started off the season making 25 points off the, from their bench points but today Evans, Strawberry and Neighbour have been kept quiet so Mike have done a really good job we talked about their scout taking away that three-point shot and really disrupting the way Cheshire want to play basketball now the breakneck pace has been relentless throughout the first half assuming that rolls over four quarters who benefits more from that pace you know I, i'm conflicted on this one because first and foremost i thought it was going to benefit cheshire i thought they were a little bit deeper had that bench scoring coming in but the way they're playing at this moment in time it's really not allowing them to go inside into the big guy ocherobia and it's really really favoring the way manchester played so i think it's you no know, advantage manchester if they're going to continue to play at this pace let's look at the start that the giants had in particular the start that taj green had talk about that whirlwind beginning nine points in the first five minutes and change from him yeah and, you know fletcher putting the ball right laying it up for him 
know, getting the ball in space. They're playing off him there. You know, he knows he can shoot the ball. He's got the confidence, made that first one. Here he's dancing with the ball, making a quick shot. He sees it as a mismatch. Like I was saying, I'm thinking Ochoa should get into the paint. Well, Green wants to pull Ochoa away from the basket and exploit him from out, uh, from outside. And as the fellas mentioned in comms, uh, as we uh, saw, Dirk Williams didn't really factor a huge amount in the first half because they were just getting so much from elsewhere. Ramon Fletcher very much did, and uh, doing what he does best. Remember, number two in the league right now. Uh, with assists so far, six more for him in the first half, nine points as well. From the get-go, we could just see him conducting and orchestrating. Definitely, you know, that, that big three-point to start the game was big for him too. He's still not shooting the ball that well from the three-point line, but the way he distributes the ball, he's essentially saying, if you run the floor, you will be rewarded, and players love that. So it's brilliant from Fletch. Let's talk about how the Phoenix can get back into this because offensively you were already buying their game plan initially you mentioned Mike Ocherobia as they got him more involved in the game and things started to change things started to flow and I think his advantage is his strength you know, he, he needs to get down low he's got nice touch you know Lee's in it a little bit in foul trouble make sure you, you're attacking him every single time get get uh, get underneath the basket right now I felt they were really kind of focused a little bit on the perimeter taking some bad shots get the ball inside and let them go to work still feel they're in this though definitely uh, now if Phoenix do make it to another major final this year of course they had success last year it could be a pretty, pretty interesting guest list because we picked up on something uh, Jordan Strawberry the son of the great Daryl Strawberry the former New York Yankee and New York Met baseball legend Lloyd Daniels Jr his dad played in the NBA for the Lakers for the Nets amongst uh, many others so that could be one hell of a guest list oh definitely from a athleticism perspective I also saw we've got Roberson you no know, brother in the NBA and then you've got a scene in the crowd today you've got Dominique Allen you no know, the, the, the legend of Clive Allen's daughter here so we've, we've already got a guest list here here in Manchester next gen in full effect I think is what we're saying brilliant stuff all right uh Let's uh, do, well, it's your, always your favourite part uh, of the show. Let's see where the disgusting player of the week is going. It's a BBL Plays of the Week. You could just see that clearly open up. Musso immediately found Green cutting, and Green slams it home once again. Somehow Washington gets it away. London scrambling for it. Oh, he's into the seas. Kufos running the break. Throws it up to Nelson. Oh, what a finish from Luke Nelson. Incredible. It wasn't the fast as the fast break with the big seven foot center leading it. But boy, was that pass on the money. A beautiful reverse layup from Luke Nelson. No doubt you used to reach those heights, big man, I'm sure. <laughs> now, last week we saw that we were there, of course, covering that game. You said at the time, Josh Sharma, you're going to think about it. You're going to wait and see what plays out before you anoint him. Is he our winner? And I saved that. I saved that. That Nelson Sharma connection, that was absolutely disgusting. Well, you see, it's better. The wait, the wait was worth it, Josh. The, the wait was worth it. Brilliant stuff. And congrats to everyone in that list. More of that next week. More here from here in Manchester. What a second half we have in store. If the Giants can keep this pace up, wow, we could be in for a thriller. Second half coming next.
12-point ball game here in Manchester. The Phoenix players in deep conversation working out how they're going to try and get back into this. Find out as we go back to Mike and, and Dan. Thank you very much, Dan. Yes, uh, they need a little bit of uh, extra offense for sure, but a, a lot more extra defense, particularly in transition, Treshier, if they are to pull themselves back into this game. For sure, Dan, it's really difficult to win a basketball game when you concede 100 points, and that's what the Giants are on pace for. This is a Giants team that's very well talented offensively. They average 91 points a game, but the Phoenix have to mitigate that, uh, but also the world on the other end of the floor. Two for 15 from the three-point line. Phoenix have to improve. And he's green. Caught fire early in the first half. Can he do it again here early in the second? Yes, he can! It's like he catches the basketball. He's got time to measure it up and shoot the ball. Phoenix have to increase the urgency here. Daniels down to Jerobia. Double team comes. Teague made the right cut but couldn't hold on to the ball. One of those game fatigue at the moment. The dark place and you're not hitting your hitting your strides. That's a ball he should catch and should finish. On a positive though, I think there needs to be more synergy between the bigs and the guards on Cheshire. So it was good to see them get the ball inside early, making the right cuts. So we need to catch that and finish. Well, Cherobia helping off Lee, who can also hit the three, and Green crashing the glass for the putback. His first two-point field goal of the game. Wow. Austin right back. I'll have those two points back, thank you very much. Well, that's the Achilles heel of the Giants, isn't it? We've seen it a couple of times, them just not turning around after a score themselves and setting up. Larry Austin Jr. taking full advantage of it. Williams is going to let it fly, and he's going to hit the bottom of the net. Wow. That's a shot that's really hard to contain. Williams' length and athletic ability and accuracy from beyond the line. Deadly. Daniels trying to reply. His is short. Bobbles about, but Green is able to get his hands on it. Robertson out in front. Forced to slow down at inside to Lee Williams back to Lee for another one now that's too long it's a good looking shot though William Lee's got a lot of time to get that one off Blanchard almost coming up with a steal Austin getting all the way to the basket once again 12 for Larry Austin and that's what he wants to do He wants to attack the rim and Giants have to figure out a way here If the first line of defense isn't there step over help defense. There's no one challenging that shot Well that bounced away looked like off the foot of Ocherobia, but we can play There's Anderson in the corner for three inside and there's uh, two fatigue, too much needed points. And that can ignite a player. That confidence is to see it fall through the hoop. Good energy there from Teague. Nice spin from Fletcher, but the pass is broken up by Daniels. Can Cheshire get the hands on him? No, they can. Robertson steals it and scores. Robertson's done so well there. Scrappy play. But again, the Giants don't get back, and this time it's the big man out in front. And that's uh, multiple possessions this quarter already where the, the Cheshire Phoenix have just walked down or ran it down the basket on the other end. So Giants, a little bit of a lull here in this third on the defensive end. Oh, two-handed block from Ocherobia. Goodness me, protecting that rim. Lee gets back to deflect that away. Wow. <laughs> and Mike Ocherobi, I remember playing against him. Probably one of the strongest players I've ever played against. Going up there, two hands, easy block. Anderson, in and out. Fletcher going quick, lobs it forward to Dirk Williams. 
And then Chirobi is going to get caught for his second personal foul. Such a difference maker, Makar Chirobia. Last season we saw grab so many double doubles for his team, but he's on the defensive end as well. His positioning, his ability to change shots, and even as simple as that, it's just getting back on defense and being a, you know, not allowing easy layups. Three and a half minutes gone in the third quarter. Cheshire with a timeout trailing by 14. I suppose the, the upside for Cheshire so far is the fact that when Manchester has scored, more often than not, Cheshire have quickly run back the other way, but they've got to stop the scoreboard ticking at that end of the floor. Giants are just pouring in the points. Yeah, and that's the thing. When... When you're playing the catch-up game like this, the offense is great, but you need to stop the bleeding, so you need to get some stops down the other end. So it's definitely on the game plan, but I do like the aggressiveness of that Cheshire has come with in this third quarter. They're, they're not afraid to take it to the rim. And obviously, when that three-point shot isn't dropping, that's what the options you got to look at. What other shots can we get? And uh, attacking the rim is definitely something a strength that this team has. The theory of the game that the Phoenix have to capitalize on the turnovers Manchester Giants 12 turnovers. If the Phoenix can gather the basketball, push the basketball in, in transition, just like the Giants are, that's a really quick way to get back into a game, especially if you're not shooting the ball particularly well. Just two made three pointers for the Knicks in this one. Williams off one foot doesn't go. Austin, not loose by Robertson. That's going to stay with Cheshire. Good hands from Robertson. And Larry Austin Jr. too. He had to shoot that ball over a William Lee that was chasing him down. Evans gets into the key all the way to the basket for two. His goal tended out in the end. It's a nice move, and the scout report would say get out to Evans on the three-point line, which Giants did, so that pump fake really was effective for Evans there, and his ability to get all the way to the rim and finish. Green in the corner for another three. Yes, indeed. Taj Green, five of five from behind the arc. Taj Green should be the guy. You should not leave. Don't give him an ounce of space. Technical foul called against Ramon Fletcher for his reaction to the original foul, which was called against him. We've seen Fletcher a few times this game turn his turn his eyes up at the refs, but when you've been in the league that long, you know, you expect some calls to go your way. You obviously feeling not not all of them are going his way tonight. This is when you've got to dig real deep into the Giants. You know, we've seen them lose 20-point leads already early in the season. It's little plays like this. When you've got a grasp of the game, you've just got to dig deep and be that little bit more disciplined. It gets to 20, it gets to 25, and all of a sudden the team throws in the white towel, a, a, a towel and, you, and you win by, you know, substantial margins. And these are little things now the Giants have to improve on. Fouls number two and three on Fletcher. Teague from deep. It's almost a set shot. Here's Ocherobia with the hook. Austin kicks it back out. Daniels backs out for three. Well, multiple goes at it. No points, though. Fletcher. Williams gets to the elbow. Rims out. going to the hole, that's going to be an offensive foul though it's on Ocherobia for clearing out William Lee to give him a lane to the basket got two big guys next to me are both looking puzzled at that I, I'm just going to throw this out, I don't agree with that call at all, I think Ocherobia was, was okay there, it looked like William Lee had pushed him in the back but yeah, I agree with you Mike, I don't, I don't see a lot there Ocherobia, that's what he's good at, he's good at getting positioning, you're allowed to 
to, 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 to try and win positioning as well. Yeah, bad call there for, for me. Don't punish the guy just because he's built like a like a machine. <laughs> well, both fully paid up members of the big man's union there <laughs> coming to the defense of one of their own. <laughs> Anthony Robinson has been that thorn in the side of the Cheshire Phoenix who came up, made some big plays, and there's another one. Austin. It's <laughs> just oh, relentless how he gets to the rim. Incredible finish there. Over two defenders. The ability to, to arc over and, and, and touch it off the glass right in there. Green again. Six of six from behind the arc. How are they not guarding him? I've been here absolutely baffled. You cannot let a guy shoot the ball who is five for five from the three-point line. Well, as soon as he caught it, you knew it was going up. What an incredible shooting display from Green. Cheshire making a change with Anderson back and Strawberry back. Cal Jones checking in. Anderson's brother-in-law, of course, now. Here's Strawberry. Strawberry fires up the three. Rims out. Jones with the rebound. Robertson's going to try his luck from three-point range, but that had a little too much legs on it. Teague under pressure, wants a foul, doesn't get one. Stolen away by Austin, can he keep it in play? Yes, he can, great work. And he gets to the basket for two. One-man wrecking ball machine. Great anticipation there with a the steal. He's got one thing on his mind here, and that's to score the ball. Green trying to cook here. Back out to Lee. And there's uh, Austin again, and he didn't at first believe he could keep it in play, and then he thought, maybe I can. <laughs> He's out in the locker room now, I think. Here he comes. Incredible energy. I agree. Incredible energy, incredible determination. How many times have we get him seen him get steals like this off the ball? Deflections, that will to win, that fire. He's trying to get these guys back in this game. You're right, Dad. It was like he was wrestling in his mind. I can't get it, I can't get it, I can't get it. Wow. Well, there was a couple of ladies in the front row who looked a bit nervous as he went pelting towards them. Lewis doesn't get to the basket in time. It's a shot clock violation. Because uh, he never had control of the ball, there was no reset of the shot clock. Cheshire still hanging around here. We've got something to go. Oh, oh that was, where'd it go? There it is. I got it. Nice route, ladies. There we go. I it just went under the table. I was able to rescue the ball. I should have shot it, really. That was my moment. <laughs> I reckon I would have got within 10 feet of the ring from here. Strawberry drives in, head fake. Gets it away. Green with the rebound. Good rebound of Green. Protecting that rim inside, making things difficult for the Phoenix offense. Williams, deep three. It's good! Duck Williams! Wow, that jab step opened up the defense. That's all it took. It shifted that little bit of space, and Jack Williams is natural if they come from out there. 15 three-pointers for the Manchester Giants. Absolutely incredible shooting from behind the arc. Lee's going to try and add to that. And he banks it in. Everything going in 
for the Manchester Giants. Hey, you got to call those where I come from, but they, that counts. See Lee here getting very loose, then getting very comfortable with the ball, blows into that jump shot, knocks it down. If you're wearing a green jersey, just put it up because it's taking threes for the Giants right now. Evans throws it away. Cheshire are rocking at the moment. Well, Green's got Anderson on him now. Playing a little closer attention than one or two of his teammates did. Williams. Oh! He was trying to get in the uh, top ten plays of the week there and he was so close. It was halfway down. Neighbor short on the three. And Green's done an excellent job as well on the defensive rebound and just making sure his team secure the ball. Nine rebounds for him in total. Eight of them at the defensive end. Cheshire needs this quarter break. Anderson calls for the foul. Sits down, 16.6 rebounds, three assists, three steals. Another stuff stat line for him. Dirk Williams. Anderson with the rebound. Shot clock is on, but there's not much difference between the shot and the game clock. They can take most of this. Austin eyeing up the clock. He's ended up with a three. Oh, and it goes. Wow. Gets it to go. It's excellent defense from Callum Jones. May I say, he was like a moving brick wall. Did not let Larry Jr. pass. But Larry Jr. felt another way. He found the three-point line. And finally, Cheshire get one to go. Just the third of the season. Well, the Manchester Giants have been lights out from behind the arc. 12 makes, shooting at 63 percent and they are in the lead here at the end of the third quarter with the score 74 points to 56 after that score well can the cheshire phoenix come back in this one we'll have the fourth quarter after this break
Welcome back to Manchester, where the Giants have an 18-point lead to start the fourth quarter here. 74 points to 56. Evans. Hit comb by T. Good attack from Evans, and that's what we're going to need now. Activity around the offensive glass. It feels cheap, easy putbacks. Trying to close the gap in this deficit. Dirk Williams in the corner. Corey Johnson joins the three-point party. Well, of all of this going on, Corey Johnson, arguably one of the more deadliest shooters. It's another one to go for the Giants. Oh, Green all on his own. Thank you very much for the stop. Oh, baby, this guy does it all. Threes, twos, dunks. Taj Green is having himself a night. And the steal. Just love the way he plays with that energy. One of those guys, too, that maybe perhaps went under the radar. They do oh, he turns it on the oh. back to himself. Oh, have you ever seen anything like it? Incredible. Treating this game like an all-star game. The defense was stopped. He's the only one who reacted from the other three points. I want to play. What is going on right now? Well, the whole place erupted. They'd not seen anything like it. Lewis driving through. And even, even the players were slightly thrown out, I think, after that. Austin getting through for the score. Wow. Let's see that. Take a little moment here to just recap what we just witnessed. Sometimes you're gonna think outside the box. <laughs> that might just make it to the play of the week. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, I don't know if Kieran can wait a whole week to get the break out the disgusting for that. Is Lewis for three? I can see Kieran in the corner shot and disgusted, disgusted, disgusted already. Hamilton just packed it in from inside his own half. It was after an unsportsmanlike foul by Green. I think he just needed a breather after that. Here's another look at it. He just throws it off the glass and chases it himself. Incredible. And in a season where the, the league strap line is no our name, Bob Green comes in. By the end of this year, we'll know his name for sure. There's a guy who's certainly making noise in the British basketball league. And a guy as well who's perhaps flown under the radar, played junior college in Division Two, which is the levels below NCAA Division One in college in America. And a guy now giving up three to play pro ball and he's taking full advantage of it. I was talking to Vince and he said he was, he was in the States and it was Corey Dixon, his old... Uh, player who said come watch my point guard he's playing in this game and he went and watched the game he saw Taj Green who was the MVP of the game and he was like he wasn't coaching at the time wasn't planning to coach it so I just note the name down in case anybody asks me in the future and then suddenly he's coaching and here he is and what an introduction to the BBL he has made over the opening few weeks Is Lee for another one. Sure. Johnson with the rebound. Well, if Cal Jones hits the three, then we just finish the game and go home, I think. <laughs> Lewis. Rebound Anderson. Anderson. Oh, get that out of here! William Lee with the swap. The rim protector, William Lee. Three and a half blocks a game. He enjoyed that one. Yeah, solid move here by uh, by Jamel, but obviously they've got some rim protectors on the Giants. Lewis had hold of Anderson on the inbound. Yeah. 
Lewis, after committing the foul, gets the hook from his coach. Anderson's shot is short. Stolen away by Strawberry. Running it back, Strawberry is blocked from behind. Wow, Anthony Robertson showing us what he can do on the defensive end. Perfectly timed jump and block from Robertson. And, that, and that's what you want to see when those teams trying to run it down, down your throat in transition. You've got guys there in the paint protecting the rim, and I think that's been the biggest difference between those two teams tonight. Both teams playing heavy in transition, but, you know, the Giants are there limiting second chance points, getting blocks, whereas Cheshire not always there on the help side and, and giving up points in transition. Time out called by the Manchester Giants. Well, not mentioned, Jordan Strawberry's dad, Daryl Strawberry. I'm guessing the two young, so I remember Daryl Strawberry. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I'm old enough. I'm old enough. There we go. Yeah. Fantastic. You're too young for the 1986 Met World Series. A little too the young for that. Classic one know. with Gooden and Di uh, Lenny Dykstra, Mookie Wilson, tremendous. The curse of the Bambino continued for the Red Sox when the Mets won that one. But we won't get bored of watching this, that's for sure. No, we will not. And I just love the reaction and the, the sort of the confusion around everyone in the arena, including the players on the court. Well, years ago, that used to be a travel, by the way. You couldn't throw it off the backboard to yourself. But not anymore, and he took full advantage of that. Good luck for the referee who blew that with the court, and that would have done Yeah, 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 imagine. <laughs> imagine wavering that off. Straight into T, good end uh, line out of bounds play there. Dirk Williams hits another three. Dirk Williams takes it to 15 points personal. Lee pulls it off the rim. And he's squeezed out. And a foul is called against Austin. Reward. Offensive foul fought against Teague. Well, we said it was going to slow down, but the three point prolific shoot for the Giants continues. 13 for 24 for a very healthy 54%. driving to the hole denied this time well however many games they may win or lose this season the Manchester Giants they're going to be fun to watch all year if you get a season ticket here you're going to get some value oh I agree and mostly due to this guy right here Vince McCauley recruiting a team such as this if you can't win a championship or put yourself in a position to win a championship then the next thing is let's be entertained and this team certainly is that it's their talent offensively but also Leading the league in block shot so far, so you know the challenge and everything on the other end of the floor as well. Well, Ben Thomas wasn't happy, I think, with the possession. He's not happy about a lot of stuff right now, obviously, given the state of the game. 
He felt that should be their possession. He had a long chat with the official, and the official at the end just went, that's a technical. So it'll be a free throw for Williams, and then we'll go back to that inline ball. That's twice they've tried that cross-court pass from Fletcher to Robertson, and both times it's ended with possession for the Knicks. His fourth personal foul. Well, there's some movement on the uh, Giants bench and the coaching staff, but only to tell Fletch he's got four, not to take him out of the game. Here's Strawberry. Anderson going to the rim. Well, Anderson, I think, thought that was a shot clock violation because he sort of half heartedly tipped it back. Yeah, a bit of an awkward play there. I thought maybe he thought the whistle went off or the buzzer went off before well, he maybe, could shoot. Maybe it did because the referees called the stoppage to the game. I thought he called a bump foul. I thought he called a foul. There. Yeah. Foul on Strawberry. Mentioned his dad, his brother is a professional basketball player as well. DJ played for some of the great European teams. Ritas, Olympiacos played in Spain for Murcia and uh, all over Europe. Went to University of Maryland. Kieran played, Kieran played with him. Gosh, he must be old as well. <laughs> Stolen away by Austin. Oh my! Another great block this time, Robinson! They're just coming from everywhere. Anthony Robinson, high above the rim on that occasion. Great timing and... Oh, might have been a goal I though. think it was. <laughs> if it hits the backboard before the block, it's not legal. If, it, if you hit it onto the backboard, that is legal. And that looked like it might have just hit the backboard first, but... Not cool. It's in, it's in the place of the week. <laughs> and here's Green continuing to score at will. 26 points for him. Wow, what a game he's had. Nice pass. Austin using the rim well to protect another block and in fact took a foul to have a bonus free throw to come. I think it's one of these instances now as well. You've got to be pretty careful with Larry Austin Jr. There's, there's no other gear for him but the, the top gear. And, you know, I think it's safe to say that this game is, is pretty much out of reach now. And you want to make sure that a guy like Larry Austin Jr. remains healthy as he's coming back from injury himself. But he's certainly had that Warriors mentality in this game. 21 points personal for him. Tweaked and his and ankle. Efficient as well. 71% shooting tonight. Yeah, he tweaked his ankle a couple of weeks ago. So just trying to get back to 100%. But as you say, he never gives less than that. And he was, you remember back last year, Nick started really slowly in the, in the league. Took them a while to find a feet. He came in, he was the real catalyst to propelling their season onwards and of course the MVP in the trophy final. Yeah, what a game he had in that final. Literally willed them to win in that one. Dirk Williams out to lead. Oh, they're unconscious tonight, the Manchester Giants. 
That's good penetration and kick there. Selfless play. William Lee stepping into that shot. That's a smooth as they come. Well, at one end of the floor, it's three after three after three. At the other end of the floor, it's Austin to the basket, Austin to the basket, Austin to the basket. And you know which one's worth more, Dan, don't you? Yeah. But twos add up to a lot more than the threes. I mean, Larry Austin, 10 of uh, 13 from two point range. They're almost all layups. Austin for three. Stolen away, another one. The seventh steal of the game for Larry Austin. And he runs it back. <laughs> there was a, a potential matchup there between Larry Austin Jr. and William Lee. And William Lee elected to do the intelligent thing, I think, and take his foot off the gas. Robinson getting in, he's fouled, and that will count! Goes through the contact for two. I really like Anthony Robinson's game. I think he's a guy who just went to work, he's chipped away. All the stars around him, he continues to play hard, and what a finish there at the rim. You know, a team like this with all the star power, is kind of hard to stand out, but Robinson has done that tonight. You know? Really stepped up in those moments when he's needed them to, in those little lulls, he's come up, a couple of huge blocks. And finishing at the at the rim here towards the end of the game. Well, I was talking to Vince before the game. I said I was hoping it was a little closer than when we came here. Similar time a year last year for the Northwest Derby, and he said I think Manchester won by about 30. And he went, all right, 29. That'll do. And he's well on the way to living that out as another big jam. From Green. Again, selfless play from Robinson. He knew that Green was trailing. He found him, and Green with another monster dunk finish. Well, you can't get more efficient than Green has been today in terms of his offensive output. But as you talked about, his rebounding, particularly at the defensive end, has been fantastic as well. And he's got the biggest smile in the building tonight, that's for sure. Well, we did say it's hard to win a basketball game if you can feed 100 points, and I think uh, it's safe to say Giants are going to get to that mark. They've got two minutes to do so. Ramon Fletcher could do it right here from the line. Maybe not on this trip as the first one falls short. They've actually made as many threes as they have free throws in the game. That is the 15th made free throw now. They are 14 of 25 from behind the arc. And Ramon Fletcher will get the last two minutes off. Have a solid game for him, 12.8 assists. Oh, William Lee throws it out again. <laughs> The protection, the challenge. William Lee, so long and athletic. Wow. Not loose by Robinson. Fletcher actually leads the BBL all time in assists. He just overtook Alton Bird on the last game of last season. High sevens, so that eight will keep stretching his lead in the all time assist per game category. Tipped in by Well, Lewis will come in. Doug Williams will get the acclaim of the crowd as he sits down. 16 points for him, 4 of 7 from behind the arc. Robinson off the mark. Green with the offensive rebound. A 
foul is called. Well, that was double double. Taz Green, 28 points, 10 rebounds at the moment. And a chance to get himself a 30 point game as he goes to the free throw line. is an impressive stat line 30 of 10 with 6 of 6 from behind the arc is a stunning stat line and he'll have that if this one goes in ah, built him up <laughs> fell short I'll take the commentator's curse on that one nice defense Ken <laughs> <laughs> is going to get the acclaim now as he sits down 19.7 rebounds three assists three steals and three blocks on the stat sheet another great game for him both ends of the floor you like about william lee doesn't seem to force too much as well lets the game come to him that's two thousand pound equipment you know watch it good job johnson Well, Ben Thomas with a timeout here, 124 to go, down 22. This, this timeout is is a message not about today, but about the next few weeks, really, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, this is a team that wants to continue to improve. They feel like they, Ben Thomas said that he feels like he lost the game against the Patriots at home. So it's these little things now that they need to tighten up on. This is a game, really, that. It's going to be a tough ask for them. I think Giants got out early. You knew that they were feeling, them, feeling themselves and feeling good for the offensive end. And Phoenix have been chasing from from the get-go. And again, this is a long season, and Coach Tom will know that his team will need to improve. But from the other end of the floor, Manchester Giants looking the real deal here tonight. We've seen them go up and down over the first four games. There was a lot of up today. There wasn't really any down. Yeah, they've looked really, really good. And they've had a lot of open shots as well. It, again, it's I think not to, to put too much of a microscope on the Phoenix, but the, the defensive breakdowns and missed assignments have been in large numbers today for the Phoenix, but you still need to make shots, you need to make plays. What well, I like about the Giants is the, the ability to share the basketball and get good at open looks. Evan, not much shot block to work with here. I don't think he sees it. Well, that's the football equivalent of a hospital pass. He went probably grand new jacket up on the brother. He almost made something out of nothing there. Inside the final minute, Manchester already with a hundred on the board. Green driving in and knocked to the ground by Chirobia. Help back up and he'll shoot two. Well, you kind of don't want him to shoot a three. You don't want to blend yeah, yeah, on that yeah. three point line. Six for six, perfect from beyond the three point line. So, but what you do want, and I think everyone is building once, is Taz Green to get to 30 points personal because boy does he deserve it. Well, he's got two attempts to get that. And he does 30 points. I just immediately looked at the bench to see if Vince was going to take him out and let him enjoy the applause from the crowd but there is no movement there make it 31 say, every game i've seen him he's had a big smile on his face and that's probably the biggest one oh he's trying for a block there as well Rob 
Robertson with the final offense of the game for Manchester. Robinson looking to go to work, drives in. Evans with the rebound. Oh, and he just loses it out. Lewis drops it off. Robinson will get the final score of the game. Play into the final whistle. Giants get another two. And this time, Robinson gets one. Well, that will do it. An impressive performance for the Manchester Giants, led by that man. 31 points and 10 rebounds are perfect. Six of six from behind the arc. And the Manchester Giants really shot the lights out here today. They really did. And it was from the very start, the first quarter, they took a big lead and just showed us their aggressive nature of the offensive end. They were looking for that three ball, but at one point they were looking for each other. They were good shots, which their teammates converted and got out to an early lead. And the Phoenix were forever chasing, and the Giants offense never slowed down. 14 made threes for the Manchester Giants, only 11 missed. If you're above 50%, you're going to have a good chance of running out comfortable winners, and that is exactly what they did. And Lee, defensively, uh, incredible weapon to have at the back, because he can just throw anything out. Well, I think we're at a point now where we're early in the season, teams are trying to figure themselves out. I think there's one thing that we've established tonight is that the Manchester Giants are going to be a very entertaining team to watch. Free flowing, talented, exciting offensive team, but they've also got the athleticism, the length, the size inside the block shots, which we all like to see as spectators. And they enjoy playing together as well. It was one of the things Vince was talking about before the game, how much fun the group has together. You could see that the way they welcome Green into the middle of the huddle there and let's celebrate it with the young man after a tremendous performance for him. Certainly got that positive atmosphere in here, isn't it? The fans really enjoyed the basketball this evening and a happy Vince McCauley walks across court. And everyone in green seems to have a smile on their face. Well, let's go back over to Nat. You know, one of the most overused phrases in sports broadcasting is statement win. But I think in this instance, that was very much... We talked about the Giants being title contenders, stepping up in prime time. That was a brilliant performance. They just dominated... You know, and I, I loved watching their, their starting five came out to play. Everyone contributed. They always talk about Ramon Fletcher bringing players into the game. He found them, got them going, and that made all the difference. Offensively, five of uh, London's players in double digits, but it was the defensive intensity for much of the second half that stood out equally. Well, I was talking about trying to get the ball inside. Anytime they went in the, the ball inside, they blocked the shot. They told, got them to four shots up. Cheshire shot 11% from three. It's an incredible starting five, isn't it? Are you concerned about the depth here with Manchester? You know what? When, when, it's, when it's starting five are shooting the ball the way they were, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not concerned at all. But I think everyone's got, going to contribute. You know, they, they do have pieces on the, on the bench who can you know, control the fort. And that's, that's what you need. When you have a high-flying starting five like the way they do, get a little bit more confidence from their bench, they're going to be a, a, a title contender. All right, uh, it was a brilliant all-round performance from this starting five, but there was one player that absolutely stood out for us this evening. Talk about a prime-time performance. Taj Green is our MVP, and he's with Mike. Taj, 31 points, 10 rebounds, a massive double-double. Talk to us about this game tonight. Um, what, what got into you guys? I mean, it's a rivalry game, so we got to attack it, you know, a little different. So um, just like I said, the same energy from last game, you'll get it every game. And you went six for six from three. Is this something we're going to see from you every night? Um, hopefully. Like, I've been working on a lot of shooting, so with Coach Vance, he makes us shoot a lot of threes, mid-range, so it's just not threes. Like, it's, it's other stuff in my game, too. And uh, entertaining might be an understatement here, but let's talk about that dunk, man. Was that just something you planned? Was that just off the cuff? How'd that happen? I don't know. Like, I just did it. It was a, it was a quick thought. Like, after he jumped, uh, after the pump fake, I just I risk it. That's all I do. I just take risks. <laughs> I love it. And uh, let's talk about your teammates today. Uh, everybody really contributed, an all-around effort. A word on them. 
I love my teammates from from the top to the bottom. Like everybody, I love them with all my heart already. So with us only being what five games in, it's like we looking we looking forward to a good season from our point guards to the bigs. We just we already clicking and we really only been together two weeks before all of this. So like I said, we just gonna keep clicking, it's gonna get better and better. And that synergy on the court now, obviously a great win in, in a local derby, but can you take that to the rest of the league? Oh yeah, we anybody who wants to smoke, we giving it. <laughs> love it, love it. Thanks for your time. Thank you. An exceptional performance from Taj Green, our MVP. 31 points he ended up with. As Mike said, he was six out of six perfect from the three-point range. Nine boards in there as well. My my bad, sorry, ten boards, including uh, eight defensive boards. So a double-double for him. And what I love about watching him play, Kieran, outside of the obvious, he has a smile on his face most of the time. He enjoys his basketball so much. He's out there having fun. But, you know, I, I always talk about, from an IQ perspective, being able to see who's guarding you. You know, when he had a bigger player on him, he took he shot, shot from outside. Someone smaller went inside. It's a great, great mix. And that's a great finish. <laughs> oh, I mean, we could watch that all <laughs> night long. We're going to watch it a few more times, I, I promise you, before we come off air. Uh, he talked about the spirit in the camp. And we could see that. We can see it now behind us. The players still together. There, there seems to be a real belief with this Manchester side this year. And you know what? Credit to Vince. He, he, he finds a way to create that family environment. You know, he, he, he knows when he recruits his players, he believes in them. He wants them to shine. And having that belief as a player, buying into that whole team, that's, that's what takes you forward. And that's, you know, Vince, Vince is so good at that. Already making his mark here in Manchester. The crowd, the fans absolutely love that performance. I'm sure it will put a big smile on Vince's uh, face as well, and he now is courtside with Mike. Co Coach Coach Vince Vicali, huge smiles from you from your side. How does it feel to be back? Oh, it's lovely. It's just terrific to be ha actually have a chance to actually coach a basketball game. You know, that's the biggest thing for me right now. I'm valuing every single game I get to coach, uh, and I'm just excited to have a bunch of guys like this who want to play for me. And let's talk about your, your brand of basketball, a massive, well-rounded game with 50 points in the first half, 54 points in the second half. Is this the type of brand of basketball that we're going to see from you all season? Yeah, I mean, I think I already said, you know, we want to take 43 pointers. We want to score 120 points. Uh, we want to run the opposition off the floor, see if they can come with us. We've got 10 guys who are super fit. We believe we can run everybody off the floor. Uh, and that's what we're going to try and do. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm harking back to the days of Billy Mim. So a big shout out to Florida. <laughs> And let's talk about one of your players tonight, Taj Green. Huge double-double, 31 points, 10 rebounds. How important was he for you oh, tonight? Oh, terrific. He's just a jack-in-the-box. You know, he's a clown. He's a character. He does absolutely everything you would wish, you know, from your son because uh, he plays so hard, you know. I have to kind of control him so he doesn't run out of space. But uh, I got him, uh, talking about Taj, I'm going to make a big shout-out to Zaya Taylor and Corey Dixon, who played for me. Both of those guys pointed me out to this guy when he won the MVP of the HBCU game this, uh, when I was in New Orleans. And uh, I'm so delighted I listened to them. Some great throwback names there. Now, this is obviously a local derby game, a statement game. If there's a win like this, send a message out to the rest of the league. Uh, we're not here to send messages. We could care less, you know. Um, the Cheshire Phoenix are our local rivals. We love what they're doing. You know, they made it to a final last year. They won a final last year. Uh, they're a terrific organization. Uh, we're just having fun. Right now, we want to build Manchester basketball. We want to get the community involved in what we're trying to do. And uh, just have some, some fun and win games. Whatever happens at the end, happens. Coach, you look like you're having fun out there. Good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you, Hank. Yeah, it really did, didn't he? And uh, it is great to see Vince back in action. And what a big win it was. So many big performances. You liked Anthony Robertson, just shy of a double-double for him. 17 points, nine boards. William Lee, uh, another big game for him as well. He started the season brilliantly. 19.7 boards, three steals, and of course, three big blocks. Yeah, he's just doing it all. You know, he's playing with so much confidence. I always said at Leicester, he was a, a strong piece, you know, the X factor there, but he played a role, a very defined role. And, and, and Manchester, it's a bigger role, and he's playing, you know, shooting the ball really well, step back shots, put the ball through his legs, he's doing it all, and it's great to see him, I guess, unleashed and that, doing his job. That is a great point, because when Vince signed him, the quote he gave, we want to make attending Giants games a really entertaining event. Well, you've nailed that, Vince, so far. And William is one of the most exciting players there is. So he's got a freedom, a different role. I hadn't considered that. We could really see a level up William Lee this year. Definitely, you know, and, and that's what I'm saying. He didn't need to do it all, all the time at Leicester. He's got to step up here and he's, and he's shown that he can. Comfortable win in the end 
for the Manchester Giants. But the Phoenix showed a lot of fight through much of this game. I'm sure there are plenty of positives for coach Ben Thomas to take from tonight's performance. Let's find out. He's now caught side with Mike. Coach, uh, obviously a disappointing loss there, but like we just spoke about here, what are the positives that you can take away from this game? Um, not, not much. Uh, you know, we talked before the game and, you know, two of the main keys were ball security and shot selection. Um, you know, we shot three from 27 from three-point line. You know, from two-point line, we were aggressive. We got to the basket. We scored basically 80 points off twos, OK? But, you know, we've got guys shooting shots that we shouldn't have been shooting today. Yeah, frustrating shooting night from most of your team, but obviously a big performance from one of your main guys, Larry Austin Jr. Talk about his performance tonight, a huge 27 points. Yeah, massive, but he's attacking the rim, and that's what we talked about. This team will not defend at the rim. Yeah, William Lee's shot and, um, blocking shots, but he's not trying to defend. Um, you know, if you get to the rim aggressively, you will score on this team. That's the game plan going into it, and we didn't follow it. What's practice looking like after this game moving forward? Well, we've got a big game against Sheffield, uh, Ellesmere Port Sports, Sports Village on Sunday. Um, you know, a completely different game, a real slow-paced team. So now we've just got to switch our focus to that and move on. Thanks for your time, Coach. Thanks. Understandably not happy with the way this one played out. That game against Sheffield, incidentally, is going to be massive. Sheffield lost tonight. We'll see the rest of the BBL scores in just a moment, which means they're 0-4 now. So that's got a huge amount riding on it at this early stage of the season. Larry Austin Jr. was, as Mike suggested, the standout player for them. He plays with such intensity, doesn't he? Seven steals he had in the mix tonight. We said at the start, you know, he's a, he's a you know, disruptor, hands in the passing lane, telegraphing passes. It was great to see him attacking the rim, you know, he had that ankle injury. The only thing I was a little bit concerned about is he stayed in the game. Keeping you know, him in. Yeah, the game was over and I, you saw him limping a little bit. It's one of those situations that, you know, is it, would the rest be you know, needed? Yeah, it's so instrumental for them. Uh, and the, the energy, the intensity he plays with, I guess it's like looking in a mirror for you, big man, yeah? <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Speaking of which, type of play of the day, I mean... Uh, no surprise where we've gone this week, Kieran. You know, I actually jumped off my seat. It's probably the highest I've jumped my whole career. <laughs> right. This this play, look at just look at this. Got the steal. You know, I, I I don't even know what he's thinking. It, but that, that was just that's disgusting. He said uh, he said he got the disgusting this week. There you go. That is high praise of deep touch. He said in the chat with Mike, didn't he? He just took the opportunity, rolled the dice, and uh, he is glad he did. We are glad that he did. And I suspect we're going to be seeing that plenty of times as the season plays out, including you could lock it in for plays <laughs> of the week next week. Right. I mentioned Sheffield lost uh, tonight. Tough start for Mike Tuck, Sheffield Sharks. But Kieran, there'll be a smile on your face there. The Gladiators, 74-70, the final there. Newcastle ran London close for a while, but in the end, the Lions broke free. 85-72, the final in that one. And the Bristol Flyers looking good once again. Good win for them, 87-77 over Plymouth. Plenty more action around the BBL this weekend. Surrey and, of course, Dan Clark, we mentioned at the top of the show, uh, now fully entrenched there. They take on the champs, the Leicester Riders, on Saturday, Sunday. Another cup game, Plymouth taking on Newcastle and back in the championship, Cheshire and Sheffield back in action once again after their defeats this evening. We are back next week. Seeing Sheffield in action up against the Newcastle Eagles in Sheffield. As usual, we're on air at 7.30 for a 7.45 tip. Breathtaking stuff here in Manchester. Brilliant stuff from you, big man. We'll be back with you next Friday for more BBL action. Enjoy. Oh, 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 oh,